Wes Balin. Well, guess what week it is, boy? It's week 11. It's playoff week, so yes. it's week one, week one of the playoffs. The play-in games are over. This is the High School Football Scoreboard Show presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, HR technology, payroll, and scalable HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity, HR that makes a difference. So, so Balin, we're not at graffiti tonight. We're, we're, actually, we're actually over at Gators Dockside in Baldwin Park, so we want to give them a big shout-out for hosting us tonight. We just got done with the Varsity Sports Network selection show where we named 120 of the All-Stars for Orange and Seminole County. That roster will be shrunk down to 80. So if you're just now joining us, uh, we appreciate you. If you're staying with us, we appreciate you watching that show as well. And we're going to stay on the coverage here with Varsity Sports Network while we do the high school football scoreboard show tonight. But, Baitlin, I know that um, the change of scenery is here. Like we, we're, we're at Baldwin, uh, Baldwin Park, uh, Gators Dockside. Yeah. We have some great food. So I just want to thank them yeah, for thank having you. us. Yep. For having us. So, like every show, guys, this is how it goes. I mean, we're going to recap the biggest games in Central Florida. We're going to have our dudes of the week, which, if you don't know, those are the players of the week. We're going to have our quarterfinal matchup preview, which is where Baylor and I are going to break down every single every, matchup. every single Central Florida matchup tonight. So, if you got anybody you know that's in the playoffs, you're going to want to stay tuned for that segment a little later tonight. We also have, guess what, Baylor? We got three state three state championship games this weekend. He, we have I will be at one of them. I'll yeah, let you know and, later. And these are some of the smaller schools. But look, on this show, this this is how it goes down. If you get yourself to a state championship game, I don't care if it's you know single A, double A, or you know yeah, FHIS, the, one of, whatever it is, one of the church leagues, yeah. SSAC, whatever, <laughs> whatever it might be. If you get yourself to a state championship That's game, special. you're going to be talked about on this show because we are the high school football scoreboard show, and there's no bigger honor for these young men right. than to get to play in a state championship. And lastly, but not least, as always, Balin and I will make our predictions for the top five games in Central Florida. And Balin. Who are you going to upset this week, my man? You'll find out later in that prediction segment. I cannot wait for that. There's some big matchups this week in the quarterfinals. Before we get to our recap from last week's play-in round, yeah. uh, Balin, we always do this every week. We do our takeaways from last week, and I'll go ahead and lead us off. Okay. My big takeaway was what happened to Dr. Phillips. And, I mean, that game with Palmetto, Palmetto – I think that Paul Meadows is a team that we might just see in the state championship game. Yeah, I, I, I mean, think so. I think if you can hold Dr. Phillips scoreless, that says a lot about your D. And what wins championships, Balin? Defense. Defense well, wins I, championships. I would argue that, but yeah, defense. Of course you would because you're a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're always over there. <laughs> defense wins games. Offense wins championships. That's my that's my motto. Well, you got <laughs> yours. I got mine. But I, I'm not I'm not trying to dog Dr. Phillips. Right, I think they, right. had, they had a great season. But I was surprised. Mm -hmm. I genuinely was shocked that Dr. Phillips wasn't able to get on the board and, and yeah. be able to hang with Palmetto. But it really, I think it says a lot about Palmetto because a Rodney Wells defense um, is one that obviously still came up to play, still shot. Yeah. They helped Palmetto, help, uh, Palmetto to 10 points. Yep. Balin, did you have any takeaways yeah. from the week one, or, or excuse me, the week zero of the play-in games? So looking at a big scheme of things, we talked a lot of last week about the 7A bracket. When I'm looking at the 7A bracket, honestly, the, from the way that the, the year went, it's not as strong as 5A. I looked at the top teams in 5A. You talk about Miami Northwestern, American Heritage, Jones, Rockledge, Tampa Jesuit, Lake Wales, Reigns, Pine Forest, Key West. I believe the top three teams as in Northwestern, American Heritage, and Jones could beat any team in the state of Florida, in my opinion. I think that 5A is the hardest uh, conference or hardest division to make a state championship run. I think that is a well-deserved uh, – 7A is still tough, but, you know, I, I think in a scheme of things, after watching week one unfold and now all the scenes of the quarterfinals, some teams are going into the next round because of COVID and situations like that. But when you look at the quality of opponents, we got to look at that 5A bracket. And it's, it's pretty special, Heath. All right, Baylor, what do you say we start recapping those top five games from last week? And let's go right out to Winter Garden, Florida, where the Battle of Winter Garden took place for the second time this season. This is I'm talking about West Orange versus Ocoee. West Orange easily wins this game 38 Man. to nothing. Second time this year that Coach Shepard was not able to, to meet up to Coach Granado's West Orange Warriors. Balin, I was a little surprised that Okoe couldn't get even on the board here. West Orange is proven that they are a team in this area under Coach Granado in his first year yeah. that, is, that is starting to peak at the right moment. Right. There's a couple other teams we'll talk about that are doing that as well up in Seminole County, but one team right now in Central Florida that's doing really well in Orange County is West Orange High School with a big play in round win, 38 to nothing over Okoe. Balin, what do you got for me? Yeah, this game was a rematch from week eight in which West Orange took advantage and took care of business 31 to zero. And this game was much similar as the Warriors picked up right off where they left off of. 
Tyler Huff had himself a game of the night on the junior quarterback, finished uh, 8 of 16, 143 yards and three touchdowns, two of which went to star wide receiver Jaden Gibson. Huff also had a, an impressive 50-yard touchdown rush later in the game. McDoom capped it off the night with a 35-yard interception return for a touchdown as the Warriors shut out Okoe for the second time, 38-0 in the first playoff win since 2015. Great job, West Orange Warriors. All right, Balin, I want to move on to the Lake Brantley versus Evans games. And actually, you know what? Before we do that, um, we are a show without a studio right now, um, and that's because of obviously COVID. So for those of you watching on VSN, if you wonder why we're kind of huddled up very close to one another, is we're having to literally phone in our show. Um, I know it comes across still uh, as a good product and very clear, yeah. but I just want to be clear so everyone understands why we are you know, sitting about an inch apart. Yeah. All right, so let's go with Lake Brantley versus Evans. Obviously, this game was another rematch. Lake Brantley can continues to get better by winning 34 to 32. This was the Seminole County team that I wanted to talk about that is peaking at the right moment. This team keeps getting stronger and stronger behind the running back of Anthony Williams, the UCF commit. And I like Lake Brantley going a lot deeper in the playoffs. When we get to our predictions, don't be surprised if Lake Brantley comes up when we get there. So Lake Brantley versus Evans. Lake Brantley takes care of business 34-32. A little closer than I thought it should be. Balin, what do you got for me? Yeah, this was another rematch game in the first round of the playoffs, and Brantley took uh, took the first one, 55-26, uh, to 26, but this game was much more exciting. Lake Brantley came into this game um, with a, a pretty much all the um, advantage with a five-game win streak. They had a lot of things flowing for them, um, but the Patriots, they scored on every single offensive drive except for two. Um, Eastern Kentucky commit DJ Boney and the Trojans put on a little comeback at the end when Boney connected with Alonzo Allen and freshman linebacker Brandon Jacobs stripped the ball and returned it back for a 20-yard touchdown or 70-yard touchdown at, at that. But the two-point conversion failed and Lake Brantley ran out the clock. What a game. 34-32, Brantley takes it. Now we're looking for a, another good game with Lake Brantley and Lake Mary. Hey, when it comes down to the playoffs, you got to win those close games like that. I mean, right now yeah. it's win and you stay in, lose, you go home. But seriously, teams that can pull things out in the last moment and, and, and overcome adversity are teams that have those miracle those miracle state runs. Yeah. So Lake Brantley, congratulations for staying in the playoffs as you move on to round one of the playoffs. All right, Balin, let's get to our next game. We've got Olympia versus your alma mater, Man. Oak Ridge. I know you're a little bummed here. Olympia yeah. edges Oak Ridge. Seven to six, Coach Travis Gabriel over at Olympia gets a huge playoff win. Man. Maybe one of his first since he's been there. But Travis Gabriel, congratulations on behalf of the staff um, here. But uh, Balin, let's talk about your alma mater falling to Olympia. I know you, I don't yeah. see, I already see some tears being shed. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. So this was our third rematch game in the first round of the 2020 playoffs. And this one was all defense. Olympia got its score early in the first quarter behind a four yard run by Romarian Henson. The Pioneers responded with a 45-yard touchdown pass from senior quarterback Roderick Henry to Jaquaria Sands, but they moved into the, uh, they missed the extra point. Both Harry, uh, Henry and C.J. Brooks combined for a total of five completions. Five completions, Heath. Uh, both were sacked by a combined total 11 times. Henson finished tonight with 100 yards rushing on 16 carries and a touchdown. Oak Ridge loses a close one. They were dominating in the first game that they played in the regular season, up 10, ended up losing that game, and then another heartbreaking loss to Olympia, 7-6. to six. Olympia moves on against Treasure Coast in the uh, quarterfinals. You are listening to the High School Football Scoreboard Show. We're coming to you live from Gators Dockside in Baldwin Park. Baylin, this place is great here. They've been nothing but helpful to us all night long. Uh, yeah. You know, they have wing specials like tonight. Baylin, you and I were able to uh, take advantage of the all-you-can-eat wings, and that's on every Wednesday night from 6 to 10. So we want to thank Gators Dockside for the hospitality. All right, Balin, let's keep it moving. Now let's get down to some ranked teams yeah. that actually had to play in the play-in round. Let's go with number five, Winter Park versus Eastridge. Winter Park easily wins this game, 42 to six. I think Coach Shifflin has Winter Park playing at playing at all on all cylinders right now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, behind Dakota Mitchell, I mean, he was in here tonight for the selection he show. Was, yep. He's uh, he's on his way to play for the for the Gators and Coach Dan Mullen. But Balin, Winter Park, one of the hottest teams in the area. Easy win for them over Eastridge. They move on to the first round. Balin, give me some numbers on this bad boy. Yeah, this was my Molly Wap game of the week, and the Wildca uh, Wildcats came out and dominated behind senior running back Aaron Rodriguez, who was also here for the show earlier, uh, who rushed for 86 yards and two touchdowns. And junior quarterback Jaden Matulis had his best game in the air, throwing for 151 yards and a touchdown pass to obviously wide receiver uh, Florida Gator commit Dakota Mitchell, who also had a 58-yard pick six. Uh, the Knights' only touchdown came from running back Kenny Bright from two yards out, but it was all Wildcats, and they come with a lot of momentum uh, going into this big-time matchup 
versus a puff in the quarterfinals. We're going to talk about that matchup later on tonight when we break down the games. I won't be surprised if that's not our game of the week. You will have uh -huh. to wait to see and find out. But, Balin, let's talk a little bit more about Winter Park for just a second. Okay. Winter Park, to me, has under, you know, with, with uh, J.D. Machulis. Okay. We, I think that his, his ability to beat you with his legs and his arm yeah. are the one reason why Winter Park can be really dangerous because, I mean, everybody knows a dual threat quarterback, a quarterback that can do that, they're the defensive coordinator's nightmare. Yeah. And you know Machulis better than anybody. Yeah. Give me a little more on Machulis. Yeah, so Machulis is a special talent. I've been training him for the last year or so when he was at Oviedo first and then ended up transferring to Winter Park. I think that was a major addition to the Wildcats offense after losing Casey Case to Buffalo. Um, I'm telling you what, Jaden Machulis is a name you're going to want to remember. He's only a junior, comes back next year. He's got speed, he's got the arm talent, he's got the smarts. He's, he's very athletic, sees the field really well, high IQ level. I'm giving him a lot of praise because I've seen him develop from a quarterback who can just throw to now a true quarterback who can read defenses, play, play at a high level consistently. And now, when you have the pass game along with his run game, because we covered that Timber Creek game versus, Ed, uh, versus Winter Park, and he did a lot of good things on the ground. Now that he's done a lot of good things in the air, throwing 151 yards, I'm telling you what, going into this Apaka game, he's going to be a big reason if I choose the <laughs> Wildcats to upset Apopka. All right, let's move to our last and final game of our recap segment. We have Dr. Phillips at Palmetto. We already talked about this game a little bit from my takeaways. Palmetto upsets Dr. Phillips 10 to nothing, and I'm calling it an upset just because Palmetto's not a local area team, right. and they're not on our ranking system, but Dr. Phillips obviously ran into a tough opponent, and you know what, that's what I want to stop for a second. I want to talk a little bit about this play-in round. So, Balin, here we are with the play-in round, and we just lost one of our best teams, like best teams in Central Florida, best teams. Yeah, best our, playoff team. Our number four team, and I mean, my thoughts right now are like, you know, this is the randomness of what this season is going to be. Yeah. So at some point, though, here's my thought. Do Dr. Phillips would have had to go through Palmetto. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At some point, they would have had to face off against Palmetto if Palmetto is who we think they are. By, we by beating them 10 to nothing, I think they are who we thought they are. Yeah. So Dr. Phillips gets the win here. Balin, give me a couple numbers on this game. Yeah, so obviously this was an intriguing first-round matchup, and both Panther defense played sensational. But it was Palmetto star Miami commit Brashard Smith that decided this game with 122 yards on the ground and a... Uh, second quarter touchdown. Dr. Phillips couldn't get anything on the offensive momentum the entire night. This was the first loss that ended a 14-year first-round playoff win streak for Dr. Phillips. This is a team, again, late in the year, plays really well defensively to put themselves in a state championship talk. It's unfortunate that they that the way the seeds uh, were planted in the, the third week of the season where they had to match up against Palmetto, who in, in retrospect is going into their third game of the season. They were only one and one going into this matchup, but they are loaded with talent. Um, I think Palmetto has an opportunity to reach the state championship game in 8A because of the talent that they have, uh, but it's unfortunate that we're not going to see the Panthers at all the rest of the season. So quickly, Balin, we're going to get to the Jones Tigers, the number one team. We're going to get to Seminoles, Seminoles later on. Winter Park obviously has the big game against uh, against, against the Popka that we're going to get to right here on the High School Football Scoreboard Show from Baldwin Park at Gators Dockside. We'll be back in just a moment. Yeah, we can talk. You're not going to do commercials? Okay, so we actually just got our producer to turn our mics back on. If you're joining us on VSN, uh, we're obviously on WDBO right now in, in Orlando and ESPN 580 in Jacksonville. So you're getting a little look behind the curtain here. Uh, yeah. This is something that we like to do with Varsity Sports Network. It's kind of, we call it our bonus coverage, if you will. Yeah, right. So if you're watching us on Varsity Sports Network, this is something that you can only get on Varsity Sports Network every single week, our show. Uh, so stay tuned uh, during the commercial breaks with us because we're going to turn the mics back on after we have a word with our producer every single time. So, Balin, how do you think that first segment went? Yeah, I think it went really well. Obviously, you guys uh, get to see how the, the flow of this works. Uh, we were on this two weeks ago on VSN for our, uh, for our radio show. I love what we're doing here. Again, this is bonus coverage, so things that we're going to talk about, the you know, people on the radio are might not going to get to yeah, listen to. Yeah, it might be a little different. It might be a little more relaxed. We might talk about, you know, the jersey selections for the week. I mean, yeah. let's, let's talk about Haggerty Obito jerseys right now. Does yeah. Haggerty come out with the baby blues, uh, the baby blue uh, tops and helmets? That's the only way they beat Oviedo. <laughs> 
you gonna you gonna I'm get, serious. You're gonna do the I'm gonna do your I'm gonna do yeah. your Boone High School pick when they play <laughs> Dr. Phillips. <laughs> they yeah. have to wear a certain jersey to have an opportunity in this football game. Because yeah. I'm telling you, Oviedo's coming in with a lot of momentum. I love what Haggerty's doing, obviously. Yeah. But when you when they wear that baby blue, yeah. maybe I mean they, they play a little different, Heath. What so do you think? I can give you a little insight. I talk, actually talked to Coach Michaels, so okay. I think they're going with those baby blues on baby oh, blues. Oh, we might have and, an upset alert. And, and so this is some real inside information. I talked I talked with Coach uh, Michaels, and he told me a couple of things that you know the listeners might not know on WDBO, but we're going to get it right here on Varsity Sports Network. They had some guys nicked up against Oviedo the first time. So they didn't they, play. They had no. They had a couple guys injured, key players injured. Ooh. Guess who's, guess who's healthy going, coming into this game? Well, Wyatt Haggerty. Wilson. Haggerty. Haggerty's, Haggerty has all their guys healthy for this game, and I think that's going to be a difference maker. And when we get to our predictions wow. later on, um, I don't know, if, are, is that one of our games we predict? Uh, it's not one of the games, but we do talk about that in our matchup, our selection matchup. So, guys, we're going to go over all the playoff games in the quarterfinals for Central Florida. Obviously, it's three match of the uh, hometown showdown. Um, so you're going to hear a little bit. I mean, we'll probably predict that game since it's a big game, but yeah, it's not one of our have, top hey, five. Let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and call that one when we get to it. But <laughs> yeah. I do have some inside information that you're getting right here on Barstool Sports Network, and that was they were not completely healthy that first round. Interesting. Against, I didn't against, know that. Yeah. So um, this one of the little nuggets that you might get here. But, uh, Balin, we're going to talk about this on the radio, but can I talk about that uh, awful, awful sauce that you got tonight on your chicken wings? <laughs> yeah, we can talk I mean, about seriously, that. I mean, seriously. Guys, I mean, if you don't know me by now, I would like to reinvent the wheel. If you've been listening to our radio show, you obviously know we go over a food item of the week. Uh, <laughs> today we are doing the uh, selection show, which was amazing. You're going to probably want to re-catch that if you missed it. Um, it's going to be obviously a, sh a showcase on YouTube later on. Um, but, man, I'm telling you what, Gators Dockside have some of the best wings. Wednesday nights, obviously, they have their special going on. All you can eat, boneless wings, and obviously all you can eat, uh, endless fries. And today I, I decided to do something interesting here. I did a combination with Parmesan garlic and sweet Thai chili. That sounds disgusting. Man, I'm, you cannot that knock sounds... it until you try it. Look, I... he, I'm telling you what, man. Until you try it, you can't talk about nothing about it's not see, sounding see, appealing. See, this is, the, this is the kind of stuff you get when you get to look behind the curtain on Varsity <laughs> Sports Network. We talk matter about, fact, we, uh, a matter of fact, Bayon actually. Can we try yeah, this live? Let's, do, let's try can it live. Try, yes. You have to right, try it try. live. So this is, this is the disgusting sauce that Bayon <laughs> came up with. I'm trying it for the here first time. Here we go. Watch live this. Live right here on the air. Oh, somebody give me a drop cam. No, dude, that's so hype. Oh, that's so hype. No, no, no. What? Dude, it's got to be the best tasting thing. Look, first awesome. of all, first of all, when one of your sauces is peanut butter and jelly, you're going to go after me on that? Hey, I mean, a, a, good, on, a good PB dude. and J is way better than what you just did. There's, PB and J on chicken. I'm telling you, it's also really good. You got to try it. I'm telling you. That, that is a crime against chicken wings. That is a crime <laughs> against chicken wings. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, Gators Dockside has right, some well, of the best wings. Thanks. And we're back on the air, guys. All right, Balin, we are back here at uh, Gators Dockside here in Baldwin Park. This is the high school football scoreboard show presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, HR technology, payroll, and scalable HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity, HR that makes a difference. We want to also thank again to uh, Gators Dockside for all-you-can-eat wings on Mondays for $14.99 from 6 to 10. And tonight, you can come in for all you can eat boneless wings on Wednesdays from for $11.99 from 6 to 10. And it's not too late, folks. You can still get down here. They serve those till 10 o'clock. Balin's already had about four plates of them, so he's taking full <laughs> advantage of the all you can eat uh, um, all, all you can eat uh, chicken wings. Chicken wings. So Balin, every single week. It's my we favorite have, segment. We have to get down to our players of the week. And what yeah. do we call them? We call them dudes of the week. So Balin. I say we go ahead and get started with Let's our offensive it. nominees. Let's go with an excellent quarterback over at the First Academy, Baylin. Who do we got? We have Son Johnson Jr., quarterback TFA, had 10 carries, 49 yards, three touchdowns, and a tough 33-27 loss on a Hail Mary versus John Carroll. All right, Baylin. Let's go over to another quarterback from the one of the one of the fastest and, and most strongest building teams in the area. A quarterback from Lake Brantley High School, Baylin. Who do we got? We have Noah Kudak, Lake Brantley quarterback, 219 yards rushing, two touchdowns, and a 34-32 win over Evans. Obviously, he also just got nominated for the All-Star game. He we did. Just, we just mentioned uh, that we just announced on BSN. So congratulations to Noah Kudak. 
to for being a nominee for this week's Dude of the Week. All right, let's get to one more, one more nominee here, Balin. Let's go with a wide receiver from Timber Creek High School. Balin, who do we got? We have Marcus Manuel, Timber Creek athlete, had three receiving touchdowns and a rushing touchdowns, four in total, and their 40 to nothing blowout win over Colonial. Okay, Balin, it is time. It is time for the offensive dude of the week from the first round of the playoffs. Balin, let's go with none other than the, the quarterback that we've talked about all year long. He's been nominated. He has not won it yet. He is the quarterback at Lyman High School. Balin, who do we got? Yes, we have Curtis Argroves Lyman, quarterback, 27 carries, 276 yards, five touchdowns, and the game-winning interception and a 42-38 playoff win over South Lake. As a kid I train, he is special. Guys, he's only a junior. I promise you, by the end of his career, he will have every Seminole County touchdown record as a quarterback. He is special. Curtis Argroves, congratulations. Balin, why you got to do that? Always got to throw your little plug in there. Of All course, right, let's, man. let's move on to our defensive nominees for Dude of the Week. Let's go out to West Orange High School. We got an athlete out there, Balin. Who do we got? Yeah, we have Matthew McDoom, West Orange athlete he had a 35 yard pick six and a 38 nothing shutout win over Coey. all right Balin our next nominee is going to be not not a player not a player we're going with a whole entire team Jeez. defense Balin what team are we talking about Winter Park Wildcats defense had four interceptions totals all four interceptions coming from Daniel Evans Braden Black Braden Knopf and Dakota Mitchell all had interceptions in the 42-6 win over East Ridge all right, Balin, let's go with one more nominee. Let's go with a linebacker from Evans High School. Balin, who do we got? Brandon Jacob Evans, linebacker, hit a strip force fumble and returned it 70 yards for a touchdown and a tough 34-32 loss to Lake Brantley. All right, guys, it's time. All right, for the first, first playoff round due to the week on the defensive side of the ball, it's going to go right back out to Winter Garden, West Orange High School, a linebacker, Balin, who do we got? Jonas Polonese had eight solo tackles, three tackles for loss, one sack and a forced fumble in their 38 nothing shutout win over Okoe. Jonas Polonese is another all-star selection that we announced in the show earlier. He is special, plays both sides of the ball, also plays running back. The kid is special. Congratulations, Jonas Polonese from West Orange High School. Okay, we're the only show in the state of Florida. Every single week you will find us talking about a special teams player of the week, and this week's no different. Just because the playoffs have started, we always are going to have a special teams due to the week. Now, we have just one, Balin, no nominees. We're going to get right to it. It's going to be a special player going to Arizona State from Edgewater High School. Balin, who do we got? We have Tommy Hill, Edgewater, Arizona State commit, scored on a 60-yard kickoff return for a touchdown and also scored on a 40-yard touchdown pass and also recorded an interception in their first-round playoff win over Forrest. Tommy Hill, you are special, kid. All right, so those are the nominees and the dudes of the week for this round. And I want to thank all of the players for uh, – for playing their hearts out, and obviously we want to congratulate the guys that made Dudes of the Week. Uh, but Balin, you know, we have something special coming up here. When we Cannot come back, wait. we're going to break down every single final game when we come back right here on the High School Football Scoreboard Show. So guys that are still watching on VSN Network, guys, we just went over our Dudes of the Week. We do that every single week. We nominate three players both on offense and defense, then come up with a uh, overall player of the week. We don't like to give it twice to the same player unless he just – absolutely plays phenomenal but you can be a nominee consecutively uh we talked in our selection show uh jashari jones from west orange is the name that we always talk about um obviously dakota mitchell a special athlete who was here earlier with aaron rodriguez who's the running back at winter park um we, you know we name a lot of these guys curtis argroves like i just mentioned yeah i like to throw my little thing in there i do train quarterbacks if you guys don't know who i am outside of this show uh, and he's a kid that is special. I'm telling you, Curtis R. Groves is only a junior. I got to watch him last year against Lake Howe when he played my cousin Cohen. And boy, he is literally the football team. The only the, the, the game that I went to this year, that was the Lyman-Lake Howe game. It was the first year that Ly, uh, Lake Howe beat Lyman, and I think it was uh, 10 years. And Curtis didn't play because of an injured uh, ankle. So I, it was almost a blessing that that, that happened so that Lake Howe can finally get over that hump with Lyman. Also, a key interesting fact here, guys, that did not know this, Lyman is 2-7, and seven, but going into their playoff uh, game last week against Southlake, they were 1-7 and seven and got a playoff win. I think that's pretty incredible when you talk about this whole COVID situation. You got teams that may have never even seen the playoffs now actually get a playoff win against a 5-4 a and four South Lake team. So that's pretty impressive uh, in, in which in the matter they, they won, which Curtis Argroves obviously scores 
five touchdowns on the ground. I mean, come on, man. So, Balin, let's do this. Let's okay. do this. Since, let's we're, do since we're doing a look behind the curtain, and we're going to break this game down on the air in just a moment. Okay. But let's just talk some Jones Hernando because I don't know if people know this, but yeah. Hernando is a seven and one. Seven team. and one football team. I yeah. mean, and these are two five A monsters. Yep. And I mean, you're tight with Coach Will. I'll be at that game. I, I I'll be covering that game. You'll I don't hear it think, later. I don't think it's fair that I mean Jones has to play another seven and one team in the first, you know, in the first round yeah. that, that could knock them off. Now I don't think it's going to happen. Right. I mean we're going to get down to those predictions in a little bit. But, okay. But I mean this is the wild and crazy thing about this playoffs. Right. And I know that we keep dra you know we keep dragging this out about oh it's a bad draw or oh it's a good draw. But seriously, like Jones is one of the teams, if not the team that has the best chance to get to a state championship yeah. game. I don't want to lose them in round one. Yeah, and I don't think we I don't think we will. I mean, if we're going to talk about this, the the thing that, you know, obviously I'm very tired with Coach Will. I actually went to two practices this week, uh, yesterday and today, just to kind of get a feel of them, just to, to see how, how the chemistry is. I'm telling you, Coach Will has everything run like a college program. Everything is on time, on purpose, for a purpose, and it's just like clockwork. And I'm telling you, when you have a team like that, you understand why they win big games, like yeah. going down to Miami and beating a Shaman Amidana 7-0 in the second quarter, beating a, a, probably arguably our best team in Central Florida in Edgewater, completely dominated that game. Then they beat, you know, obviously West Orange on the road. They beat Apopka on the road. The, the, you understand why they are who they are. Um, and I'm telling you right now, when you look at the, the level of opponents that, that Jones has played compared to Hernando, you start to wonder, like, okay, 7-1, and one, yeah, but when you talk about the talent in Central Florida, I think we are, if not the best other than Miami. When you compare the two with the most talent from yeah. roster to roster, and I think that's going to show come Friday night when you have a 7-1 and one team from Tampa coming to Central Florida at Jones in that type of environment, it, you're going to see why Elijah Williams is where he is right now with Jones. Well, I know you're a big fan of his, and we're a big fan of uh, of Gators Dock side yeah. for tonight. Uh, I know that we're just going to keep plugging them. We obviously we're kind of killing some time in the break here, but you're going to get a little bit of extra information here on Varsity Sports Network. This Hernando team, we don't know a lot about just right. because they're from out of the area. They have a great running but, back. I'll tell you that. Watch him. I, I really, I mean, I really am liking Jones in this game either way. I mean, I would really like to look at Hernando's one loss and see who that was because you, yeah. know, you know Coach Will is looking for that. Matter of fact, let's, let's go ahead. Uh, and let's, let's, let's look it up right let's now. Let's go ahead and look it up right now. We've got a few moments. We've got about four minutes excuse me, three minutes before we come back on the air on WDBO and ESPN Radio in Jacksonville, Florida. But there's so many good games here that intrigue me. Yeah, Maybe this is probably like, the best, I think, round of playoffs that we're going to see yeah. this, uh, in a while. This next segment that we have coming up is uh, just loaded. I mean, loaded with information, loaded with teams. We're going to break down each one of these games here in just a few moments. And if you really look at the, the, the teams from top to bottom, you're going to see a lot of evenly matched up teams where yeah. either team can win the game. It's going to yeah. be interesting how they match these guys up. Yeah, there's a couple that obviously jump out as, like, I, I think you, you would say Molly Watt games. Right. But, but there's a couple of those, and we'll go right over those pretty quickly. Yeah. But there's a couple good ones here that's going to take some time to really break down. All right, so here, yeah, we, are, so here we go. We're pulling, out right we're now. pulling it up Fernando, right now. Fernando has one loss on the year, and it is two. But this thing can load. It's okay. We're on, we're on commercial break. BSN's getting a look behind the curtain. Here we go. This is their schedule, Heath. Their only, just, loss, just give me their only loss. Their only loss comes to NCTHS in Brooksville. They got beat 34 to 28. Here we go. They they beat Crystal River 33-0. Whiskey Wacky 35-0. Wiki Wachi. Wiki Wachi. Wiki Wachi. Citrus 44-6. Central a forfeit win. Springstead 20 to 0. Lacento 26 to 8. Lacanto. Lacanto. <laughs> and Tarpon Springs 55-14. Looks like all their wins are blowouts, Heath. Uh oh. Uh -oh. We might have something intriguing here. Well, it depends. Like some of these teams, like we're just not on. Not our one record, of these so teams have a winning record. Yeah, I would, oh, okay. I'd, I'd be willing to bet. I'd be <laughs> yeah. willing to bet not one of these teams do have a winning record. It'll be interesting though. But guys, we're back on live in the next minute and a half here. Yeah, we're. Um, you, can I get the clock? Yeah, no doubt. But yeah, I'm, I'll be at that Jones game. If you guys want a good playoff game to go to, other than the Apopka, um, is the Jones game here? Wildcats, it is here. Yes. Okay. Yep. Right. That that's our two best games, I think, in our, my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and put our mics back on. Sounds good, Heath. And we'll be right back here with you guys in just a second. Yeah, Coach Will, if you're watching, love you, man. Can't wait to see you play on uh, Friday. I need the clock. Yeah, it's not, it's not open, but it's these ads. Mm. Well, here we go. I think he's coming on. I just, I'm going to need that clock, though. Yeah.
Alrighty, welcome back to the High School Football Scoreboard Show presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, HR technology, payroll, and scalable HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity, HR that makes a difference. Well, so far tonight, we've recapped the best games from last week. We've gone over our dudes of the week, and now you guys normally we would have a coach on, or we yeah. would, you know we would have a segment here to uh, you know really interview get some, players, to interview yeah. players, interview coaches. But this is what you get here on the high school football scoreboard show. We're about to break down the all of the games. So if you're a Central Florida team, listen up, because we're about to talk about your games right now. Balen, are you pumped up for this? Man, I am so ready. And at the end of all these games, we're going to talk about our three state championship games coming up as well. That'll be the end of all the playoff talk. That's right. And don't worry. If you if you are a team that's playing for a state championship, we are going to talk about your game as well. Yes. Like Balen just said, we did not forget about you. Even though your games are already being played for the state championship, we will be talking about you guys here in just a moment. So Balen, I want to go ahead and go in order. Let's, let's do it. Let, let's go down the list. Top rank to the bottom. Let's go with our top ranked team. Let's go ahead and get your favorite one out of the way. I, I know, know you're going to talk all night about them. Yeah. And, you know, keep it to a somewhat of a minimum. But well, you're lucky we it, can't it, talk about your favorite team because they got an easy forfeit win <laughs> from uh, from COVID, unfortunately. Well, Baylin, you know what? It, it happens. It happens. So yeah. here we go. Jones High School versus Hernando. We got a seven and zero Jones team versus seven and one Hernando team. Kind of an unlucky draw, if you ask me, for an undefeated team have to find their way and be playing a 7-1 and one team, a team that blew out just about every yeah. single team that they played. Now, I'm not sure of their strength of schedule down there in Correct. Orlando, but this is a 5A bracket that is loaded. Loaded. Best, loaded. I think best in uh, FHSAA. So, Balin, I mean, I know who you like in this game. You know yeah. who I like in this game. We probably can both say that yeah. Jones is the team we're leaning towards, but, right. I mean, I know we haven't been able to break down this team so much because of Hernando. They had one loss to a team in Brooksville. Yes, right. But every other game has Blowouts. been a blowout. Yep. And, and, and they had one forfeit win, I believe. They so did. they technically have six wins. Yeah. So I went to Jones uh, practice the last couple of days just to see what they have. I think the biggest factor in this football game is getting Julian Calvez comfortable under center. Um, I believe he's going to start this game. So getting he's him started. Yeah, I believe so. They ha it's going to be a game time decision, but I believe he's going to be the guy they go with. He brings a, a different dynamic as a runner. Uh, he can do a lot of things with his arm and his legs. But I think he's going to be the, the this difference maker in this football game, getting him comfortable getting into bigger games like maybe a Miami Northwestern or American Heritage down the line. Um, we, uh, you know, Jones High School again has is where they are because of the teams that they beat, like Edgewater, a pop on the road, up 7-0 against Shamanah Madonna, who's a three-time state consecutive champ who's looking for a four-peat this year. I'm telling you what, Jones is ready and battle-tested for this matchup, and I think they take care of business. All right, so we both kind of leaning towards Jones' way. They'll be in our predictions now, keep, later. Yeah, keep in mind, we do have predictions coming up later where we get a little more firm with who we think is going right. to win. But if I'm leaning any direction right now in the show, I'm going to go with Jones there. All right, let's look at Seminole versus the land. Now, this is the game, this is we, interesting. This is the game that we wanted earlier. Yes, first game. But because game. of COVID, that the land could not play. So we didn't get this awesome Man. matchup. And I know Coach Stevie Allen is just chomping, Man. chomping at the bit to get his shot at the Seminole Seminoles. I mean, Balin, we finally get the game we want. Yeah. We finally get the game this we want. This is definitely one of our top games this week. DeLand's only two losses were against powerhouse programs, one of which was American Heritage, I believe. That is going to be a game to look at. If you guys are in the Seminole County area, you must get a ticket to this game. This will be a big Big time game. How about their other loss? Can you believe they brought up St. Thomas? St. Thomas Aquinas, that's yeah. right. So you're talking another, about American Heritage and St. Thomas. Another state championship team. So Coach, Coach Stevie Allen is not afraid not. to go toe to toe. They're so battle tested. Let's keep it moving. Let's go with our number four team, Winter Park versus number 10, Apopka. We will be breaking this game down in depth a little bit more. So, Balin, we'll move quickly on this. Yeah. Eight and one Winter Park versus five and one Apopka. Let's let's save our. Well, let's, let's, Apopka's five and three. Five and three. Five and three. Let's save this for when we get to our predictions. Yeah. So let's keep it moving. Number five, Osceola versus Palm Harbor University. Now, this is an Osceola team. What? You go ahead. This, this won't be on our games week, but this will no. be a Molly Wap. Yeah, so Balin, Balin had to get that in there. Yes. But I do like Osceola as well in that game. Let's keep it moving. Let's go with number six, Lake Mineola, a 7-1 and one team playing is that Boca Ciega? Yeah, Boca Ciega. Guess what? They ain't no joke. And man. they're 8-1, man. 6-A, 8-1. I'm telling you, this is an hey. intriguing matchup. So, I know. I, I feel bad that Lake Mineola has to no, go. No, finally. I mean, well, they have a year. Hey, what you, look, look, Heath. They, 
on our on our social media platforms, Lake Mineola has dogged us for not pulling them up in the rankings because they've been beating teams 63 to 0, 54 to 0, 70 to 0. Hey, it's but COVID they've been though, man. You but can't they've help been, you play. But look, they haven't played anybody. This is the first time they can prove to us, to the entire city, well, to, to Central Florida that they are the real deal. Okay. Beat them. Lake Mineola is a team to well, watch in 6A. Well, you just you just you just uh, upset all those teams that played them, calling them not anybody. I mean, okay? they know. All right. Well, here, here we go. Let's keep moving. And number seven, Timber Creek, the school where my dad coaches with Coach Buckridge versus West Orange. Now, here we got a, hey, we got a surprise. A so we're actually going to be breaking this, this game, game down. So we're not going to do it right here this segment. So you're going to have to wait if you want the Timber Creek West Orange kind of insight. But, hey, I'll tell you one thing. The fans, the fans are going to surprise neck. you with who they go with in this game because we did a fan poll, had over 200 fans vote on this. We're going to give you those numbers and our insight in just a moment on our next segment. But let's keep it moving. Let's go with my alma mater, the Braves, the Boom Braves, number Woo. eight versus Windermere. We're at, uh, Windermere High School. Windermere yeah. w w Wolverines. Wolverines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of it for a second. They got their first playoff win in school history last week. He, yes, they did. Can I'm, you believe that? Are you, so are you saying they're roll, riding on a high right now? No, I say that they <laughs> lose. Uh, they lose this week. They lost to Boone, 41 to zero. The game was cut short due to an unfortunate injury. This game looks to be, I think, in my opinion, to leave off where they, they left off. It's almost like the, the fourth quarter or the fifth quarter in this yeah, game with Boone. I, I had the feeling, did they play this year? Yeah, the last game. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was and say. Boone so, blew them out. Yeah, and it was and it was 41 0 in the second and quarter. And they, they had the St. John's brothers out by like Correct. the third quarter. I'll they, tell you that, no, sec, uh, halftime. I think there was a little altercation because Casey really wants to break records. Get this, guys, if you're listening. <laughs> Casey St. John is three or four touchdowns away, four touchdowns of the record, three to tie it from the all-time single-season passing touchdown record at Boone High School. He's three touchdowns away. I look to see him getting it or tying it in the first half alone. Hopefully they don't call off the dogs. I want to see Parker and Casey dominate this game uh, in the air over Windermere. I would love to see a good game, a uh, better one than the first time, but I think Boone takes care of business. We see records being taken care of in this game, and they move on uh, to see what they do later on in the future. But Boone High School, Man, all, I'm looking forward to it. All I got to say is go, go Braves. That's my yep. school. And, Baylor, real quick, just for the record, when you say, if case you're listening, well, guess what? If they're hearing this, they're listening. So yeah, that's true. That's have, true. Yeah, have I don't have to about, convince them. You don't have to worry about that, man. Yeah. All right, let's keep it moving. Number nine. Number nine with Kaiva. I see him. It's obviously. They are trending. They are they, trending. They are, they are trending upwards. They are now in our top ten teams. They've climbed up to the number nine spot. They get they get a kind of a. a I like Toho. You, I do like you, I like Toho a lot in this. I, um, but I don't obviously Wakaiva is riding a really high wave right now, beating Lakeland, beating Apopka, uh, beating teams on the road. Uh, had a close matchup last week where they had a fourth quarter comeback. They are a fourth quarter football team where they single handedly dominate. Junior, the quarterback there, is yeah. special. He is finally maturing Baylor. in that offense, taking off with Coach Tolbert. I'm telling you, Wakaiva is yeah. a team we to just, look for in 7A. We, we just named Junior, too, to the All Star. Yes, he is a selection in the All Star. So if you're he's, listening, he's uh, Junior, you have been selected. All right, let's go to Palmetto versus Lake Nona. Now, this is the team that oh, just man. knocked off Dr. Phillips. Correct. They're going to get a game against Lake Nona High School. I mean, I just think the way that they were able to shut out Dr. Phillips, Ooh. can Coach Paradiso fire up that machine over there, the air raid? Can he get it done against Palmetto? If, I don't know if he if can. If you shut out Dr. Phillips, yeah. Lake Nona, you're going to have an early exit to uh, to your house. Hey, I don't know, man. Lake Nona, you know, Coach Paradiso has, you know, he has some tricks up his sleeve. Now, uh, he, look, I, I've seen his playbook. I mean, yeah, they score a lot of points when they play. Again, uh, we won't go there. But All right. Cody Morrell, I, I want to see how he does against a great defense. Just committed to Kaiser. I think uh, he's riding a, a big way from last week, beating East River or two weeks ago in that big rivalry game, blowout win. That's nice. their last game. So we'll see how Lake Nona goes in offensively with that momentum. Nice. Congratulations, Cody Morrell. All right, let's go to Oviedo versus Haggerty, the hometown showdown. Wow, Green biggest match. game. We get to do it again. Now, we did do a little fan poll on this, and 72% of the fans do like Oviedo in this game. But, Balin, I, I know we're going to have to uh, – is this one of our predictions? No, it's not. It's, it's not. So yeah, no. I want to go ahead and do a prediction let's, now. I'm all want, for that. I want to get a sneak preview prediction right let's now. Let's do it. Okay, I'm taking Haggerty. Whoa, to beat Oviedo because, whoa, whoa, hey, whoa. Because I, I have a little bird. He's told me something. He says that Haggerty was not quite healthy wow. the first time around. And I think Haggerty, a healthy Haggerty, can, can make a seven-point deficit. Okay. Because they only lost by seven the first time. So, this, Baylin, yeah. I got Haggerty. Okay. Who do you got? I have Luke Rucker and Oviedo uh -huh. Lions here. Luke Rucker is going to shred the defense. I, okay. I do like a, 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 a close matchup here, but look for Oviedo to break away late. 
All right, here's another another really good game. Oh, these, man. these two teams played this early. This is one of our year. games of the week. This is a local rivalry game since I can remember. Lake Brantley versus Lake Mary. Balin, mm. you know I like Lake Brantley and why they're trending right we now. We have this and on our prediction, Seath. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to get too okay, much into we, that. Okay, but, we can't man. get too much into it, so we'll move on from yeah. Lake Brantley, Lake Mary, but stay tuned. We will be breaking this game down. All right, let's go Olympia versus Treasure Coast. Ooh. The fan pool was interesting here. Very interesting. So, yeah, don't understand so the, why. The fan pool was 50-50. Now, Treasure Coast, guess Undefeated. what? Haven't lost a dang game all year long. Man. I really, I really think Olympia in this fan pool is in for a little bit of a shocker surprise. I have to lean towards the undefeated team here. Yeah. But Coach Travis Gabriel, they did get the big dub against CJ Brooks has to play better than last week if they have a chance of winning this football game. All right, Lyman versus Vieira. Can Hargroves, Ooh. can he get it going? Can, yes. can Curtis beat Vieira? Yes. And I, I know it's a team sport, but that young man, that quarterback at Lyman, I mean, for you know, you could almost Jeez. put him in the running for player of the year. Yeah, he is he's in the in conversation. The, he's in the top five players for yes. player of the year. Easily, easily, so, hands down. What do you like here, Baylor? Lyman. I'm going to go Lyman, another upset win in the playoffs. You They're going like, to beat Vieira. All right. Yeah, I like he's going to score another five touchdowns. I love it. I <laughs> love it. Lyman getting some love finally on the show yeah. here. All right, East River versus Mitchell. Oh, gosh. I mean, we don't have to do Mitchell. Mitchell, I mean, Mitchell. Yeah. Mitchell. They're undefeated too. Sorry, 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 no. sorry, East River. Yeah. Mitchell, Mitchell's really, good, good really good. Good year, East River. Good year. Really, really good. I, I really like Mitchell on this one. We're getting too too much into the predictions. Yeah, but let's we'll, keep we'll going. We'll try to ease up a little bit. Mainland versus Matanzas. Mm. Mainland. Mainland. After they beat Bowles, they are serious. Yeah, I really like Mainland in this game as well. Okay, Bishop Moore versus Ooh. Lake Wells. You got two teams that only have one or two losses. Uh, Bishop Moore just came off a huge, huge, huge win. win. Probably the biggest win of round one. They upset it. Nature Coast, who is also undefeated in blowout fashion. Bishop Moore, look for them to possibly go deep in the playoff run. All right, Balin. Now, every now and then we get a little gift from the football gods, and we've got one here in this uh -oh. last, this is the last and final game that we're going to break down here. Foundation versus Orangewood. Mm. Now, this rematch. is a rematch game, but guess who the winner gets to go? The state championship. That's right. The winner of this game gets In to go play a. for the two, or two, two a. the two a. a, the two a state championship game. Balin, we've we've got a couple, a couple foundation players on the all star team. We just yeah. announced we got a couple Orangewood guys on the all star team. Yeah. This one's going to be tough to pick, but I really, I'm not making this prediction, but I, if I could lean. I would lean foundation. Yeah, they won the first matchup 41-0. I think they continue to lead off where they let uh, and, and go to state. So foundation is, in my opinion, going to win the two-way state championship. So we will break down some more games here in just a bit. But before we do, well, let's get to our three state championship wow. games. Let's talk about Big West ones. Oaks versus Zapareth Academy, a 1 p.m. game Saturday at Weber University where you play. Yeah, my alma Dylan. mater. Yeah, on that beautiful turf field out there. West Oaks quarterback Robert Wilson. Will be the uh, how, the, the the deciding factor in this so game. I think many, he. How many championships? Will they've won make it? two. This will be the third. This will be a three peat for West Oaks if they beat Zarapath Academy on Saturday, which I am predicting they will do so. West Oaks Academy. Robert Wilson will take over the football game at quarterback. Another kid I train. They oh, will go for a three peat, go. baby, and go. I'm going to be there to cover the game. West Oaks Academy. Oh wow, Baylor, you were just sneaking in all your. Oh, little, got to man. It's easy in marketing. All right, let's go with <laughs> Masters Academy versus Bishop Ooh. McLaughlin. This is going to be played in Lakeland at 4 p.m. on Saturday. I mean, I love my local teams, man. I got to go with Masters Baylor. We got about 30 seconds. Yeah, Masters so Academy goes back to back. West Allen wins a state championship. Great job, Masters, getting back there and proving everybody wrong. All right, last one is the OCP versus Mountain Dora Christian. You know what that means, man. It's going to be a 7 o'clock game. We are guaranteed a championship yeah. winner yeah. in Orange County we or, finally, or Central yeah. Florida. We will have a Central Florida state champion named in just a few hours here in Central Florida. So, Balin, when we come back, we're going to get down to our predictions. It's the where you will end up making somebody upset in yeah. Orlando. Right which here. I'll, which I'll, I'll start it off. OCP wins the state championship. There you go. Right here on the High School Football Scoreboard Show. There you go, guys. This is That was a pretty fun segment there going over all the playoff games in Central Florida, including three state championship games. Guys, if you have nothing to do on Saturday, you can literally go from game to game to game. So Weber International is about 30 minutes from the Lakeland Stadium. They are located in Lake Wells, Florida, uh, where I played, Weber International University. That game is at 1 p.m. That is West Oaks versus Zarapath Academy. Again, a great matchup, an evenly well matched up. If West Oaks wins this game, they're going to have a three-peat for the state championship run, and 
then you can dry, ride over from around 3.30, make the 4 o'clock game, and watch Masters Academy uh, versus Bishop in a potential back-to-back -back state championship run, and then stay at the stadium for the 7 o'clock game versus two Central Florida teams, Mount Dora Christian versus OCP. OCP won the state championship two years ago. Look for them to make, win two out of three so, this year. Balin, come on, man. You know that nobody's going to do that. What? What, go oh. to three different games? Why can't we? Well, so, hold on. You remember, this is a Saturday. Yeah. So college football, Ohio Man, State, look. Ohio State, Indiana. Who do you, okay, let's talk, okay, let's okay. talk college. Let's okay. Talk college. Ohio, Ohio State wins okay. by, by by twenty plus. I'm just gonna say twenty eight. Yeah, they're so, they're blowing yeah. that. So, Ohio State's the best team in the country. They, in my opinion. They, they in are, my opinion. They are crazy good. Oh man, I, I, they, dude. When they when I saw them play their first game, even though it was a cup, oh, and it actually wasn't really a cupcake game. Who was it against? Nebraska? Who did they play first game? I think they did play Nebraska. They blew them out, and I'm yeah. like, they did not well, leave, Nebraska, lose a beat. Nebraska doesn't look good at all. They just beat Penn State. Well, Penn State lost to Indiana. They are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they are terrible. So, hey, we I are, love playoff talk. We're on the Bar City Sports Network right now. You know what else is terrible, Heath? I'm sorry cutting you off. Florida State, the garbage. Just yeah. trash. I'm sorry. Uh, Go Canes. Oh, uh, man. The, Who the, needs the, to step it up? The brashness <laughs> and the cockiness that waves hey, off of you. I'll tell I you right I, now. I go home every Heath. time after this show, and I have to wash the cockiness off of me. Stop. Stop, Heath. Look, Heath, I'm telling you right now, though, we have a Heisman winner in the state this year. It's going to be Kyle Trask. I'm telling you yeah, right now, he's yeah. winning the Heisman. He is the best quarterback in college football got, right now. I'm got, calling it. He's going to win the Heisman in three weeks. We got Dan LaForce over here in the corner. Oh, he's loving guys. it. He, he he's likes lo he's, a, he's a Gator he fan. He likes Kyle Trask all the way. <laughs> I love his story. His story could be a Curtis Argrove story. I'm telling you right now. Someone that's going to be overlooked, he's going to go to the next level, Dan, score five touchdowns a game, and win the Heisman. We're on commercial break. Come on in here real quick. Let's bring, let's bring here comes in, Dan LaForce. From the Orlando Touchdown Club. Dan, here, have a seat with me, buddy. So – Let's we have get, about two minutes. Let's get the mic right here in the center of us. But, Dan, let's talk some Gator football. We're talking about Kyle Trask. We're on the Varsity Sports Network here in commercial break. <laughs> the floor is yours. I mean, listen, Kyle Trask <laughs> is getting it done week after week. Considering the fact that, you know, you take a Kyle Pitts, who is yeah, no doubt special. one of the most dynamic offensive players in college football right now. You take him out of the equation the last two weeks, and look what they were able to do in that yeah, offense. That's true. You know, it, it's very – you've got to give Dan Mullen really a lot of credit. You know, he has the ability really to craft the right guys in the right situations, and and, and Dan Mullen has <laughs> does, does an amazing job. Quarterback whisperer, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. yeah I mean, think of all the quarterbacks he's had that he's put through. You meet count Alex Smith, you got to go uh, uh, Dak. Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. And now your boy. Yeah, yeah but then he had uh, Ja'Cory uh, Ja Harris before. The, no, uh, uh, Omar Jacobs at Bowling okay, Green. Right. He had Josh yeah. Harris at Bowling Green. Those, right. Both those guys played on Sundays. Hey, you guys will hate, me to, hate for me to say this, but he also had Felipe Franks at one point. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, here, here's the thing that's most impressive to me. You have guys who have natural talent. You have the guys that have to work for the end result. Kyle Trask is a worker. Yes. This guy so. didn't come in with this natural didn't Bowen even have team. a start under his belt in high school. But he put in the work, and 100%. all of a sudden, he has blossomed into what a quarterback should be, yeah. which is a general. Yep. You, know, you can go back in history of the game, and you take a look at certain quarterbacks. Joe Montana, you want to go back, Joe Montana did not have a great arm. But Joe Montana was a great general. And, and you're watching the game now. The best quarterbacks learn how to be good field generals. Yes. And you know this playing yeah. the game. And, and, and that's what we're seeing, especially right now in the college game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, Dan, we got to get you out of here. We're going to get back onto our show here in just 10 seconds. Sorry, Dan. All right, we have made it to the final segment, our prediction segment right here on the High School Football Scoreboard Show presented by Insperity, providing employee benefits, HR technology, payroll, and scalable HR services for more than 34 years. Insperity, HR that makes a difference. Balin, this is where we need to just do a little quick round of applause and thank Insperity because this show is not possible without you. So, Balin, we're here at Gators Dockside in Baldwin Park. You've had some awful flavored chicken wings earlier. Ah, man, earlier. I doubt that. I mean, this I'm, is good. I'm not saying it's awful because you picked it and you made it that way. <laughs> but, I, Balin, I want to get right down to it tonight. I don't want to, you know, horseplay anymore. Let's do Let's it, man. Let's go right to the predictions. Here we go, baby. Let's start with Lake Mary versus Lake Brantley. We went out and pulled the fans. 
62% of the fans go with Lake, Brantley, wow. and Balin. I will lead us off with this one. Okay, go ahead. I think behind Anthony Williams, this is a sure lock for Lake Brantley. I've got Lake Brantley winning this game, riding the high, riding the wave. Lake Brantley wins this game over Lake Mary. Yeah, so guys, a little note. Uh, Lake Brantley was up 14-0 in this game earlier in the year, and Lake Mary came back on a stunning fourth quarter performance by uh, Gunnar Smith, who led the comeback 15-14. I'm and still, Rocco. Yeah, and Rocco Underwood. But I am taking Lake Brantley as well in this matchup. They are rolling high on a five-game, now six-game win streak. They beat Lake Mary. So there you have it. We both take Lake Brantley, and the fans took Lake Brantley in that game. All right, Baylor. Let's get down to Ooh, the Timber this is Creek. Tough. This one, this one is going to be tough. Ooh. Timber Creek, the number seven team in our rankings versus West Orange High School. We polled the fans, and this shocked me. Sixty-five percent of the fans are taking Timber Creek yeah. to win this game. Balin, I'll start us off here again. Okay. I think that Coach Granado's West Orange Warriors are the better team on the field and on paper, and I think that's why they get the W. They, they will beat Timber Creek, and this will be Timber Creek's last week of the season. Wow, I'm actually uh, going to go with your uh, dad's team here, Timber Creek. I think that the coaches in this football game, they are loaded with all-star cast. I think coaching gets the win here. They do beat, in, in a weird way, an upset over West Orange. They are a seventh-ranked team, but Timber Creek takes care of business and knocks off West Orange. So this might be the one time that the Timber Creek staff is actually smiling and, li <laughs> and liking your take. Hey, I always take Timber Creek, except oh, when they play the Wildcats. On. All right, well, I got the Warriors. You got the Wolves. Let's keep it moving. Number four, Winter Park versus number 10, Ooh, Popka. Game of the week. Game of the week right Big here. Big time. Folks. This is it. This is the prediction for the game of the week. At Winter Park. It has at Winter Park, and we pulled the fans. 55% of the fans go with Winter Park to win this game. I'm going to take the home team. I'm taking Winter Park. And behind Dakota Mitchell and Jaden Machulis, I think Winter Park gets the dub and knocks out Apopka. He finally, you are off the Apopka train. Wildcats all day in this football game. Jaden Machulis beats Apopka in the air. He has another sensational game. Also, Aaron Rodriguez, Dakota Mitchell, you name it. Jalen Moore, I'm telling you right now, Wildcats all day in this football game. And they advance for a run in the 8A state championship run. Okay, next game. Deland, we're talking to you up there. Stevie Allen, can you pull off the upset? Ooh. Number two, Seminole versus Deland. 92% of the fans wow. say Seminole will take this game. Balin, I've got to go with the Seminoles. I've got to go with the Seminoles, but I do like what Deland and Stevie Allen is doing. Balin, who do you got? I'm going to pick the upset here. I got Deland beating Seminole in an, a major upset and a crash in the 8A bracket. All right, the final game is going to be number one Jones versus Hernando. There's only one loss on the board between these two teams, and that's Hernando. So 97% of the fans like Jones. Balin, we got just a few moments here. Okay. I'm going to take Jones. I think I know who you're taking as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm going to be there covering this game. Jones in a blowout win. Go Tigers. So, guys, that was the first round show of the playoffs for the high school football scoreboard show. Balin, that was a fun one. That was awesome. This was probably one of our better shows. Man, I'm telling tune, you. Tune in next week, 8 p.m., right here on WDBO, the high school football scoreboard show. Guys, that's it, man. Woo. Round two of the playoffs, <laughs> technically the first round. Last round was a bubble round, but I'm telling you what, guys, you guys are in for a treat this Paul week. Wood over there giving, giving us next three. week, guys, this show is going to be insane next week. I'm telling you right now when we cover the games that just is going to take place Friday night, make sure you go pick and choose the best game that you think in your opinion. Also, if you have time Saturday, if you're not watching the Gators or the Seminoles, Miami's off for the next two weeks because of COVID, uh, go watch a state championship game. I'm telling you, you won't want to miss any of them. All right, man, shut up now. Let's go. <laughs> go Canes. All right. All right. We out. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. That was a block, yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, thank you. Hey, I'm gonna keep one of these. Hey, Dan. I'm keeping I'm keeping mine. be a lot of kids, man. Is it Hargroves? Is it Mitchell? Who is it? Who you like? Oh, I know. I'm talking about, I'm talking about an offense. Deshaun.